Greetings, everyone. You're watching the channel Aviation Obsession. As we kicked off the 21st century, the aviation world was buzzing with cool upgrades. Fancy tech, super efficiency, and top-notch connectivity were all the rage. Big players like Airbus and Boeing were rocking the stage with their fancy A320neo and 737 MAX. But you know who was kind of chilling on the sidelines? Our friends at Embraer, the Brazilian aircraft crew. Even though they're known for making trustworthy jets lately, things got a bit tricky, especially with their cool E2 jet not exactly breaking sales records. So what's the game plan, Embraer? How are we going to tackle these challenges? Let's dive in and figure it out. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, imagine you're at the coolest air show ever and the spotlight is on Embraer's E2 jets. They're like the superheroes of the aviation world. These bad boys are like the upgraded version of the classic E-jet, but way cooler. Picture sculpted wings that boost lift and a trimmed horizontal stabilizer just slicing through the air like a boss. And hold up, the real superstar? Those Pratt and Whitney PW1900 engines. They're massive, with a fan diameter of 73 inches, even outdoing the 737 MAX's engines. That's like a 24% boost in efficiency. Talk about next level. But you know, even superheroes have their challenges. So here's the scoop. The E2, despite all its fancy tech, is facing a bit of turbulence in the market. It made its debut about a decade ago with three awesome versions, but it's only managed to snag 255 orders so far. And get this, the littlest guy in the E2 crew, the E175 E2, hasn't had a single taker. Now why is this happening, especially when the E-Jet used to be the rock star of the skies, pulling in crazy sales? Let's do a bit of detective work and check out what's going on with the major E-Jet airlines. It might just unravel this mystery. Fasten your seatbelts, aviation fans. We're diving into Embraer's E-Jet world, where US regional carriers are the rock stars, owning a whopping quarter of the global fleet. But here's the twist. The E-175 is the headliner, and its cool successor, the E-175 E-2, is struggling to steal the spotlight. What's the deal? Enter the Scope Clause, an ancient contract between big US airlines and their regional partners, setting strict rules on seats and weight. Now, our E-175 E-2, with all its fancy features, runs into a snag. It's too advanced for the weight limit. Imagine having a superhero suit, but being told it's too cool to wear. This is where the irony of innovation kicks in. On the aviation chessboard, our E-175 E-2, with its technical brilliance, clashes with these old-school contracts. Even though they review this scope clause from time to time, the big shots are hesitant to shake things up. Why? Well, the current regional fleets are working like a well-oiled machine. Embraer's playing the waiting game, navigating through all the technical stuff and the ever-changing aviation scene. Changing the scope clause isn't a walk in the clouds. It's intentionally designed to keep pilots happy and address the ongoing pilot shortage. Major airlines prefer regional carriers to save on labor costs, adding a whole new layer of complexity to the aviation chess match. Picture the scope clause as the bouncer at a club for larger regional jets, preventing them from partying on denser mainline routes. Why? To give mainline pilots the VIP treatment and secure their spots on the stage. It's like aviation's exclusive party, but it's a headache when you want to introduce a cool new act like the E-175 E-2. Hold on, it gets trickier. If regional carriers want to tweak this scope clause, they have to sit down with pilots' unions for serious negotiations. Imagine trying to agree on pizza toppings with a group of friends. Now imagine them being pilots. Complexity level expert. And this regulatory maze is why our E-175 E-2 is feeling lonely in the order department. But wait, there's more drama. It's not just the E-175 E-2. Its siblings, the E-190 and E-195 E-2, are also facing a bit of a sales snooze. 
Boeing steps into the spotlight with a big plan in 2019 to scoop up an 80% stake in Embraer's commercial business. But in a plot twist, Boeing backed out in 2020, leaving everyone uncertain. Customers hit the pause button on orders, waiting for the smoke to clear. Sure, the Boeing saga played a role in this sales drama, but the real star of the show is the E-2 struggle with fitting into the U.S. regional aviation scene. It's like trying to wear a summer outfit in the middle of winter. Great, but not quite the right timing. The E-2 might be a fantastic jet, but if it's not vibing with the market, well, that's where the real challenge kicks in. Buckle up for a tale of two jets, the E-2 and the Airbus A220. Our E-2, despite being a tech wizard with improved efficiency, is that puzzle piece struggling to fit into the market's bigger picture. Now, the A220? It's the chameleon of planes, adapting like a pro with an extended range that puts the E-2 to shame. Airlines like JetBlue and Air Canada are ditching the E-2 for the A220 on longer routes, and it's outselling the E-2 by a mile. For Embraer, it's like playing a game with changing rules. The E-2 series is in for the long haul, relying on patience and strategic moves. As for the E-175E-2, stuck in the scope clause conundrum, there's no magic fix. Embraer hit pause, delaying entry into service until 2027, hoping for some clause amendments. Quick solution? Nope. It's all about playing the waiting game for now. All right, let's wrap it up with Embraer's game plan. The E-190 and E-195E2 are considering an extended range upgrade, but it comes with a price tag. Money talks, right? Now here's the secret weapon. Embraer's E-2 series is cost-effective, especially the E-195E2. Aggressive pricing, sweet deals, and airlines might choose E-2 over the competition. But wait, there's more! Long-term game plan. Embraer needs to dive deep into research and development. Think innovative, fuel-efficient, and super-versatile aircraft. Because in the aviation world, adapt or get left behind. Now the wild card is selling the commercial business to Boeing. It's a Hail Mary pass, not a guaranteed touchdown. The aviation industry is a roller coaster with one wrong move and its turbulence on steroids. Embraer's got to dance with the market or it's game over. So what's your take on all of this? Do you have a favorite Embraer aircraft? I'm all ears, or in this case eyes, so drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed this aviation roller coaster ride, show some love with that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Got some cool ideas for our next video? Share them below. And who knows, your topic might just take off in our next adventure.